Actress Kim Novak certainly has had her ups and downs in the years after her starring role in Vertigo. But she's long since found satisfaction in a very different kind of art. Mo Rocca has our Sunday profile. On exhibit at a recent art show in Youngstown, Ohio, an interpretation of Alfred Hitchcock's 1958 film, Vertigo, which starred Jimmy Stewart and Kim Novak. The artist of this painting? None other than Kim Novak. My art is really my love. It's where my heart is, you know. And I've been following your movies since the 50s. Oh, oh thank You're you. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. In the 1950s and early 1960s, Kim Novak was one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. She's most famous for Vertigo, about the obsession of a retired police detective with a mysterious blonde named Madeline, and his attempts to remake a brunette named Judy into Madeline. If I let you change me, will I do it? I do what you tell me. Will you love me? Yes. Both women were played by Novak. Was it a challenging role, or I should say roles for you? The wonderful thing about Alfred Hitchcock is, in one way, he is obsessed with changing you. The physical sense of, of the character has to be exactly the way, but he allows you totally freedom in the way you play the part. But freedom doesn't exactly describe the studio system that controlled Hollywood in the 1950s. When Harry Cohn, the head of Columbia Pictures, put a then 21-year-old Marilyn Pauline Novak under contract, he intended to make her over, starting with her name. He wanted me to be Kit Marlowe. You see, they made up their mind behind my back. We all decided your name is going to be Kit Marlowe. I said, I'm not going to be Kit Marlowe. How can I be Kit Marlowe? I said, I understand I won't be Marilyn, but I will not be Kit Marlowe. Novak's upbringing in Chicago seemed to have prepared her well for standing up to the man Time Magazine once called a Hollywood despot. Harry Cohn was frightening, and my father was frightening. They had that in common. Novak's father was a railroad worker and strict with his youngest daughter. Well, your father had tried to make you right-handed, right? Yes, yeah. When we spent time with Novak on her ranch in rural Oregon, it was apparent that her conflicted feelings toward her father remain raw. I loved my father, adored my father, but to terrify me. <laughs> he was a fine man in his way. But he was, he was tough, yeah? He was a tough man. I loved him. And I hated him. But I loved him more than I hated him. Mm -hmm. When it came to dealing with Harry Cohn, the newly named Kim Novak had a novel approach. I brought him chocolate fudge at Christmas, and I remember him actually tear up. Did you have affection for him? No, not really. You did Although in a way I did because he made good movies, you know. He always picked out good movies for me and I appreciated that. Good movies like 1955's Picnic, where the 22-year-old starred opposite William Holden. If this dance scene crackles with electricity, Novak says that's because a tornado was approaching the Kansas town where they were shooting. And I think the electricity and the air had so much to do with all that we were feeling. And we were both charged with all that energy that was out there. The life of an actor wasn't something Novak expected, but modeling work brought her out west. Soon Novak was working with some Hollywood heavyweights, including Hitchcock, who knew exactly how he wanted his leading lady to look. Tell me about the wardrobe for Vertigo. It's what happened? I went to Edith Head, you know, that suit's going to drive me crazy. And she says, well, I think, my dear, you better talk to Alfred Hitchcock about that. 
The gray suit Novak wore as Madeline was form-fitting. She said, yes, my dear, that's exactly what I want you to wear. I think you will be very happy in that. He wanted you to be uncomfortable. Exactly. That's what I realized. I have to have that discomfort. That's the way my character should feel. Did you like Hitchcock? I adored him. But Novak didn't always adore Hollywood. When Harry Cohn died suddenly in 1958, she found herself professionally adrift, offered mostly beach movie scripts. In 1966, she left Hollywood. You know, I wasn't gonna wait around. Right. And I thought, you know, what I'd like to do, if, if I have my choice, I wanna go to Big Sur and go back to painting. And um, for better or worse, I, I left Hollywood. I let in very few people in my life, and I got involved with animals in my life. I had to learn to, who I was again through animals, because animals know who you really are. The animals don't care about box office. Exactly, right? even money or anything yeah. else. With all the animals in her life, it's perhaps no surprise she married a veterinarian, Robert Malloy. Novak's life these past few decades has been quiet, even idyllic, mostly. In 2014, when Novak made a rare public appearance at the Oscars, it's been a long time. Yes, ma'am. Social media lit up with vicious comments about her appearance. Novak sought refuge in her painting, as she has for most of her life. What did painting do for you after you came home from the Oscars? It, 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 it was a tool for me. It was a tool that I could express what I was feeling. Whether it's good feelings or bad feelings, in that case it was bad feelings, but it was like all of a sudden, who cares what anyone else thinks of you? Painting is more than an avocation for her. At that recent show in Youngstown, Ohio, she felt the love. Thank you so much for taking time out. I love you. Thank you. Now 87, Kim Novak is still finding herself. Well, how much of Kim Novak was a put on, an act, a persona? All of it and none of it. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't understand what I said, but yet I do.